Here's a question. Should you vlog your first trip? No, no is the answer. Well, at least I think so. And I'm gonna talk about it in this video. Welcome back to Yam's World. I've got an interesting topic for you today about the pros and cons about filming your first adventure. I'm gonna go through some best practices and some good questions to ask yourself that will hopefully lead you in the right direction so that you can either enjoy your first trip stress-free or film it in a way that makes sense and gives you exactly what you're looking for. But before we get into it, I'm here once again asking if you will like this video because it really does make a huge difference for YouTube's algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do already. But most importantly, make sure you leave me a comment below any questions about this topic any disagreements, any things you think about it, about your own experiences and how that's gone before. I'd love to hear from you and let's start a conversation. So I first came across this idea from Alistair Humphreys. He's a huge inspiration for me. He wrote two books which totally inspired my first trips about his round the world four year trip. And it's a really fantastic read. I cannot recommend it highly enough. We are pretty different in the way we travel though. He was way more minimalist than me and definitely spent a lot less money. Uh, but that was mainly because he was eating jam sandwiches for sustenance and I just cannot get on board with that. But the one thing we do agree with is this topic about that you should not record your first adventure. And what I mean by that is that you shouldn't record it in a way with having really big intentions for what you're going to do with the stuff afterwards. Now this won't be for everyone and I appreciate that some people just want to dive into it but I'm gonna go through some of the pitfalls you might find with doing that kind of thing. Personally, I just don't think it's that worth it. When you watch stuff on Instagram and YouTube, you're seeing people in a lot of cases, especially if it's popped up on your feed, who are really experienced doing this kind of stuff. Filming your adventures like just isn't that easy. There's a lot of work that goes into it. If you see people doing it, then a lot of time they might be sponsored. They might be doing it and recording it as a way to actually fund their trip. So they have to make it look good. It's like necessary for them to do it. But it's a completely different thing than just like planning your own casual first trip, whether it's a few days or a few weeks or even like six months, which was the bigger trip that we did. But when you see someone on an adventure and they are on their own and you see them walking up the side of a hill or cycling up a hill and you get this amazing big vista shots and there's like a little dot going along or even just like a shot of them going up a hill they've had to go up put the camera down and then go back then film themselves cycling past it or going past it then go back and get the camera now of course if you're with someone else that is a bit easier and i have done like tag team videoing <laughs> where you basically cycle down a hill or up a hill stop film the other person coming up and then pass the camera over and stuff i mean it works it's not amazing you don't get the cool thing of like the sort of on the road and people going past it and stuff but it is an easier way to do it the point is that people have taken like time to do that that's like time out of their journey to make sure they're capturing that stuff and making sure they're thinking about doing that as they go and not just enjoying being on the road so basically it's a lot of work So, you're going on your first trip and you're going to film it. So what do you need? Are you going to use your phone? Yeah, probably. I mean, your phone is like got a pretty good camera. This is like a Samsung S9 and it's got a decent camera on it. This isn't what we use on a trip. We had an iPhone before, but if I was using an iPhone, then you can't have any external micro SD cards that go into it. So maybe you're going to need like a point and click, which is what I'm filming on now, or a DSLR then maybe you want to take another lens with it. If you've got a DSLR, you're probably going to want a case. In fact, I did have a case for even a camera like this because you want something that's easy to transport stuff around in. Then you're going to need memory cards, probably a little tripod, maybe a microphone. Generally, I've not done that before, but I mean, my audio was crap and windy because most places you go, especially in Scotland, pretty windy. And then, uh try and get some sleep in this windy ass head. What else might you need? A sports camera, they're pretty popular. You see lots of GoPro footage these days. 
for better or for worse. Probably for worse because I don't like GoPro footage and I think it's really boring just seeing shots of people cycling. But anyway, if you get a GoPro, how are you going to mount it to your bike? Are you going to get all the attachments? And then there's just so many GoPro attachments, it's crazy. I know the newer ones are a slightly more minimal design, they don't have the extra case, but yeah, as soon as you add that into it, it's like an extra thing, including memory cards for that too. And then just like the sheer quantity of footage you can get afterwards is just crazy. So you can sort of see it's starting to like mount up quite a lot. Then if you're on a longer trip, how are you going to back up all this footage? You're probably going to need an external hard drive, which means you're probably going to need a laptop unless you're planning to go to internet cafes if they still exist as a thing. A drone? Are you going to take a drone? Some people have drones with them now. Are you mental? I mean, yeah, it looks cool and I get it, like, it's just up there following you, but ooh, that's too much. That's too much. I'm not on board with taking a drone. So, it's a lot of stuff. You could probably fill up a whole pannier bag with just the gear to film your trip. That's valuable space that you could be filling up with cans of beer. Space is at a premium when you're traveling and very quickly you've gone from just casually using your phone to now having like a full filmmaker setup for vlogging full time and that's very easy to get sucked into that world because again you see the stuff on Instagram, you see the stuff on YouTube and it looks amazing and it's so easy to make you think that you need all that stuff too when really I don't think you do, I think you don't need all that stuff. All right, all these things are just adding additional stress. And for what? What are you really gonna get out of it? A mediocre YouTube video that gets like a couple hundred views? It also means it's way more sketchy to leave your bike unattended. So you might go and see something you really wanna go and visit. Maybe you're not on a campsite, maybe it's somewhere on the road. Okay, if it's something really cool, you're probably gonna take all your stuff with you. But like, say at night, you camp somewhere and you wanna go into town, you wanna go and visit some places. Like, leaving your stuff in a tent, you just have to be confident that it's going to be safe and you're, you're never going to be able to protect it all. But like, the idea that you might have to take all your stuff with you every time, it's just such a hassle. And you might end up just not doing that thing in the end because you want to protect your stuff. So, more gear, more risk, more money, it's just a bit of a slippery slope to then limiting the kind of stuff you want to do. I'm not trying to seem negative or shit on the people who make these amazing videos. I think they are incredible at what they do. What I'm saying though is that for your first trip, don't feel pressured like you need to do the same thing. So looking at my own trips, I live in Scotland as you probably know and I've done lots of different trips but the last one was a big six month trip from Paris to Athens with Liliana. Amazing time and I finally got round to editing all of it. I will talk more about in a future video like how I recorded that, why it worked for me and kind of the best approach in that sort of sense. But let's rewind to the first big trip I did which was in 2011 where we cycled from Glasgow to John O'Groats all up the west coast island hopping. I did that with my friend Johnny. Amazing time, it was brilliant, one of the best experiences I think I've ever had. But when it came to filming it Ooh, did I have a plan? Absolutely not. In fact, I just basically dicked about the whole time and filmed random bits and pieces and just what I kind of felt was like I naturally wanted to film. It was 2011 so I think I had a little point and click camera. I definitely didn't have a smartphone then and yeah, I just sort of filmed when it felt like it was the right thing to do or like I just wanted to, just stupid stuff. I mean when I came to edit it like a year later, was it easy? Absolutely not. Was the footage good? Not really. I mean there was a lot of like really terrible stuff there. But I managed to cobble together a sort of 40 to 50 minute film and I put it online not for anyone really apart from Johnny and I and some friends and family who might see it. If you are someone who like likes watching these kind of videos, probably don't want to watch that one. It's really stupid, it's really silly, but for us it's like a total trigger for these amazing memories we had. 
it's so fun for us to watch, but it's a really personal thing. I made that video for me and for Johnny, and that's the way I think it should be. And that really is good enough. The flip side to doing it that way was in 2017, me and Liliana went on a trip up the Outer Hebrides over like 12 days, I think. And I filmed and vlogged pretty much every day with the intention that I was going to do a vlog series. Now, I've uploaded that. It's probably like my most popular videos. And again, I had a great time and the videos were fun to make, but it was also quite stressful doing that. I found that it became part of everyday stuff we had to do. So it became sort of like this pressure that I had to get enough footage, I had to get enough B-roll, I had to make sure that I was talking about things in a way that was coherent, something I'm still working on. And I had to make sure that when I edited it, it would all make sense, that I could tell the story, that there was a structure within that each day. Now maybe people find that easier than I do, but I certainly found it to be an extra stress that I didn't really want to have that much. Again, it was worth it in the end because I came out with something that I really enjoyed, but I'm so glad that I didn't have that pressure, that feeling that I had to do that on my first trip because I think it really would have changed the way I thought about the trip. Especially I was learning how to be on a touring bike. I was learning about how to set up a camp and how to find pubs easily. These were all things that I needed to like do. I didn't want to have to think about all the other stuff. Now, a few years later, older and wiser, it's easier to do the sort of cycling part and the planning part a bit easier and not have to think about it as much so I can fit the idea of filming stuff much more into my day-to-day -day things without it causing too much stress, even though I did find vlogging every day just a bit much for me. After the sort of almost two weeks, I probably ended up with about 30 gigabytes worth of footage, which is a lot, probably because I had a GoPro this time. I mean, that was not really worth it. Sure, it was an older model, but really, I just like, I just don't think the older models, maybe some of the newer ones because they are so smooth, but like, I do find that GoPro footage, I'm over it. I think I'm over it. I, pro I will probably get a GoPro again in the future and include it in videos, but at the moment I'm feeling over it because I can't afford a new one, but I'm, I'm over it, all right? So how can you work out what's right for you? Well, basically you should ask yourself a few questions. Number one, is this your first trip? Yes, then you should just casually document it. Film when it feels natural, but don't think about it too much. Don't think about the post trip production side of it. How are you gonna edit it? Like all that sort of stuff. If you can make it work, great. If you can make something fun, brilliant. But don't get too involved in like how it's gonna edit together and the issues you might face or just how much stuff you've got to capture. Keeping it more casual, but making sure you keep a diary. I will say that. Keeping a diary is so important when you're on an adventure. It might take you a bit of time each day to do it. And I know that's kind of contrary to what I've just been saying about taking the stress about having this like special thing you need to do. But so much happens each day that having a diary will really, really be a special thing when you come back to it. Even though I have filmed a lot of my trips and I can go back and watch them, having a diary there is like so interesting to read. You just capture things in a way that you maybe wouldn't do on film or you talk about things that are much more personal that you maybe don't want to say on camera to an, an audience I suppose. So absolutely essential that you keep a diary. At the end of the day your trip and your adventure is about getting new experiences not just about filming. So say you are an experienced filmmaker and you're going on an adventure and you do want to film it. The next question really is what is your intention with this trip? Is it to maybe make it into something that is going to be part of a job for you in the future? Is that somewhere you want to get to? Like, do you want to be sponsored? Do you want to be full-time adventuring, I suppose? Because if not, then again, I would still err towards filming it and having fun with it and not thinking too much about what you're going to do afterwards. However, the last thing, if you do want to make a career out of it and become a full-time vlogger and adventurer, then go for it gung-ho, get involved, film everything. But, you know, that's what you're gonna be doing and that's fine, I think that's like a legit thing to do. And a lot of ways I would love to be doing that full time, but you know, I just just don't have it in, in me. I just cannot be arsed with GoPros and drones. I think this is a really interesting topic to discuss. So again, 
leave me a comment below if you want to talk about it, or you, especially if you disagree with me, because I'd love to tell you why you're wrong. But it is strange that we live in such a world where everything is sort of filmed to death because you need to extract some sort of digital value from it to make content and upload it. This pressure that like everything needs to be filmed and documented in a way that you're gonna get something out of it afterwards rather than just enjoying being in the moment or you know, whatever you wanna call it. But my main point is that your first adventure, your first trip is sacred and you don't want to taint it by feeling this pressure that you need to film absolutely everything. That's my main message. That's the message of the video. I probably could have just said that in one sentence. But really, just, just don't take a drone with you when you go on your first trip. Please don't take a drone with you. They're really noisy as well. As I mentioned a few times in this video, I am gonna make another one about the gear I did take, the sort of approach I took to filming and telling stories after when I was editing, and what worked for me and kind of what didn't as well. It's a pretty minimalist one, so you do need a wee bit of gear to do it, but not like tons and tons of stuff. You're not gonna fill like a whole pannier bag with your gear, with the setup I'm talking about. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it as interesting as I do. If you want to talk about it, leave me a comment below. Make sure you like this video and of course, subscribe so you get the next video on Wednesday. I think this is a really interesting topic. 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 I think this is a really interesting topic.